During the recent Israel-Iran war, Iran's government made a major decision that many overlooked. They turned off GPS signals within their borders and officially switched to using China's Beidou satellite navigation system. As Iran transitioned from the US-controlled GPS to China's Beidou navigation system, it significantly enhanced its missile capabilities. Beidou provided Iran with greater precision, resilience against jamming, and independence from Western systems. This upgrade allowed Iranian missiles to accurately strike strategic targets during the war against Israel. In recent attacks, Beidou's real-time guidance and secure positioning played a critical role in improving Iran's targeting accuracy and strike effectiveness, showcasing how space-based systems are now shaping modern warfare. This wasn't just a simple tech change, it was a strong political message. Iran made it clear that it's aligning with China. Many experts believe this move will benefit Iran in the future, especially since there's a belief that Israel agreed to the ceasefire only to regroup before launching another attack. For many years, the GPS system, created and managed by the US military, has been the main technology used for navigation, tracking, and timing around the world. But for countries like Iran, which have a tense relationship with the US, depending on American systems, it was risky. They could face GPS shutdowns, spying, or cyber attacks at any time. Why did Iran make this move now? There are several likely reasons behind this important decision. First, with growing risks from cyber attacks and electronic jamming, especially during rising tensions with Israel and the US, Iran could no longer trust a system that its enemies could easily interfere with. Second, China's Beidou system not only has strong technical features in some areas, but it also fits well with Iran's political goals. China and Iran are building stronger ties in areas like trade, energy and defense. Third, this move is part of Iran's bigger plan to reduce its dependence on Western-controlled systems. Whether it's global, banking, SWIFT, the internet, or satellite networks. Allegations against WhatsApp, Instagram, and Meta's denial. One major reason Iran made the switch to China's Beidou. System has to do with a serious allegation. According to Iranian state media, during the recent conflict, apps like WhatsApp and Instagram leaked the live locations of top Iranian officials. Location, data, creating a digital trail that could guide enemy drones and missiles. In response, Meta, the company that owns WhatsApp and Instagram, denied these accusations. They said they don't collect exact location data and that all messages are protected with end-to-end -end encryption. But cybersecurity experts say the real danger isn't in the messages. Themselves, it's in the metadata. That includes things like when messages were sent, how often someone communicates, and even rough GPS data, especially if spyware is involved. Iran's nationwide ban and U.S. House concerns over WhatsApp. Following the location leak claims, Iran took a big step. It urged all 90 million of its people to delete WhatsApp and Instagram, calling them spying tools. This wasn't just a scare tactic. Some major Iranian military assassinations, even during the recent conflict, are now being linked to leaks from digital apps. In response, Iran also shut down internet access across most of the country, blocking more than 97% of online traffic, including social media and messaging apps. But it's not just Iran. Just days ago, the US House of Representatives banned WhatsApp from all members' phones. Their cybersecurity office warned that WhatsApp is a high-risk app due to unclear data protection practices, lack of encryption for stored messages, and possible security threats. So while Meta denies wrongdoing, both Iran and the US are now treating WhatsApp as a serious security risk. GPS versus Beidou, a global power shift. This story isn't just about spying or digital tracking. It's about how GPS became one of America's most powerful tools and how China is now quietly trying to challenge that dominance in space. Beidou isn't just a backup system, it's a real competitor to GPS. With the current global tensions, we're seeing a clear split in technology between China, Russia, some BRICS countries, and the Western world. 
Beidou now has a full set of satellites across the globe, offering very accurate location services, strong protection against signal jamming, and even a special feature that lets users send short messages. That last feature, sending messages through satellites, is especially useful in places where regular networks don't work, like war zones, remote regions, or during natural disasters. On the tech side, Iran now gets access to highly accurate navigation that can help in many civilian areas like transportation, farming, and telecom. But more importantly, this is about control. Looking at the bigger picture, Beidou is picking up speed around the world. Iran's choice shows that China's system isn't just a backup anymore. It's becoming the top option for countries that want more independence from the West. How GPS took over the world and why that matters today. Stay with me until the end, because we're about to explore how GPS became such a big part of our daily lives. Most of us couldn't function without it anymore. Do kids even learn how to read real maps these days? Why did China realize that whoever controls space also controls the battlefield? How does China's Beidou compare to the American GPS system? And how might this help Iran in any future war? To understand today's shift, we need to go back to the beginning. It all started in 1957 during the Cold War when the Soviet Union launched Sputnik, the first satellite. American scientists figured out they could track Sputnik's signal using something called the Doppler effect. This discovery led the U.S. Navy to build Transit in the 1960s, a satellite navigation system for submarines. Then, in 1973, the U.S. Department of Defense created the GPS system, short for Global Positioning System. It was called NAVSTAR, and had 24 satellites working together to provide constant location and timing data for the military. In 1983, after a Korean airliner was mistakenly shot down for entering Soviet airspace, President Ronald Reagan announced that GPS would be opened up to civilians. But to protect military use, civilian signals were made less accurate. That changed in 2000 when President Bill Clinton removed those limitations, giving everyone access to precise GPS data. That decision changed everything. Suddenly, GPS powered our smartphones, ride apps like Uber, farming, even modern warfare. Life was never the same again. By the late 2000s, people across the world, from Europe to Asia, were using GPS every day. No more printed directions or arguing over roadmaps in the car. GPS saved time, stress, and maybe even a few relationships. With smartphones in everyone's pockets, GPS became a silent partner in our lives. It shaped how we travel, shop, communicate, and gave the U.S. an invisible level of control over the daily lives of billions. But with that convenience came global dependence. From truck drivers in Pakistan to cargo ships in the South China Sea, everyone relied on a system owned and operated by the U.S. military. And that control came with real economic weight. A study in 2024 found that just one day of GPS shutdown would cost the U.S. economy $1.6 billion. So, while GPS helps us find our way, it also shows us who's really in control, and why countries like China and Iran are now choosing a different path. Military control and Beidou's rise. Today, the GPS system is run by the U.S. Space Force and is now in its third generation, called GPS Third. This version has stronger encryption and better protection against jamming, but it's still fully controlled by the U.S. military. And in a war, the U.S. can shut off access anytime it wants. For a long time, GPS had no real competition. It gave the U.S. a powerful advantage in both war and diplomacy. But that's changing. Other global navigation systems have entered the game. China's Beidou, the European Union's Galileo, Russia's GLONASS, and India's Navic. Among these, China's Beidou stands out as the biggest challenger. And it all started with war. After watching the U.S. military use GPS to great effect during the 1991 Gulf War, Chinese generals realized how dangerous it was to rely on a system they didn't control. But the real turning point came in 1996 during the Taiwan Strait Crisis. 
China was angry about Taiwan's growing democracy and pro-independence sentiment. It fired missiles near Taiwan as a warning. In response, the U.S. sent two aircraft carrier groups to the area, making it clear to China to step back. That moment showed Beijing just how much power the U.S. held and convinced China to build its own navigation system. That's how Beidou was born, Beidou's rise and Iran's strategic bet. The first Beidou satellite launched in 2000. By 2012, the second version, Beidou 2, was giving coverage across Asia. And by 2020, Beidou 3 was completed, offering global service. As of 2025, Beidou has 45 satellites in orbit. In some regions, like Asia, it even gives more accurate positioning than the US GPS system. But Beidou isn't just about maps. It has a special encrypted messaging feature extremely useful in wars. Militaries and governments can send short messages even when other systems fail. Countries like Iran now have the option to use a system that isn't under U.S. control. Iran's move to Beidou isn't just about better tech, it's about choosing a partner they can trust, one that won't cut them off during a war. Think of a future conflict between Iran and Israel or the U.S. If Iran used GPS, Access could be blocked or the signal tricked. But Beidou offers Iran protection, precision for drones, missiles, and troops. In fact, Iranian war games in 2022 showed drones worked more reliably under Beidou, especially in tough terrains like mountains, where GPS signals often get jammed. China's silent strategy in the future of space wars. China is following a quiet but smart strategy. Unlike the US, it doesn't force countries to join Beidou. There are no big press events or threats. Instead, it just makes Beidou reliable, powerful, and available. As more countries feel unhappy with Western pressure, spying, or sanctions, they slowly move toward China's system without much noise. And the more they do, the weaker the US control over global navigation becomes. It's not a loud change. It's a silent shift in power happening above our heads in space. In 2025, four big satellite systems share the world. America's GPS, China's Beidou, Europe's Galileo, and Russia's GLONASS. But Beidou stands out because it's not just about tech, it's political. It represents the idea that countries can choose their own path and move away from US influence. As the global south rises, we might see the beginning of a new kind of global alliance, built on satellite signals, not speeches or votes at the United Nations. And future wars? They won't just be about soldiers and missiles. They'll be fought with data, timing, and space dominance. GPS may have started this new battlefield, but it won't finish it. For Iran and many others, space is no longer just empty skies. It's a battleground. And by choosing Beidou, Iran is preparing for that future, where who controls the signal controls the war. Conclusion We're entering a new chapter in global power, one where the country that controls your navigation system also controls how you move, trade, and even fight wars. Iran moving away from GPS is not just about tech. It's a clear message to the world. The days of blindly depending on the U.S. for technology are fading. From social media to banking to satellites, the world is shifting toward more choices and more control. This isn't just about signals from space, it's about who holds the power behind them. The sky might look the same, but the real battle is for control of the invisible systems guiding our lives. What do you think? Should more countries stop depending on GPS? Is this the start of a tech cold war? Let us know in the comments. This is Shazam, and you've been watching Deep Dig Insight. Stay curious, stay sharp,